Hello, and welcome to another thought-provoking episode of Furries in the Media. I'm your host, Rusty, and today's episode is going to be a little different in case you can't already tell. We've seen a lot of new exposure for furries in the media recently. In music videos, advertising, and in more news reports have more positive angles than they used to. Heck, even Hot Topic is getting in on things. But is all this recent media attention helping the furry community get a better image than it's gotten in the past? Today, we're doing a crossover between Evergwine and Culturally Effed over on my channel. Evergwine discusses furry exploitation or fursploitation. So check it out after this video. In this video, we'll look at three different TV shows that we think are using fursploitation tactics. The shows we discuss in this edition of Furries in the Media all deal with subject matter of a sexual nature. Viewer discretion is advised. And hey, now that we disclaimed it, maybe I'll throw a few swears in there just for good fucking measure. So let's get started with our first video from Entourage. If you don't get laid, I don't get paid. Chama, don't you worry. Unless she wants to shit on me or something, there is no fetish that'll keep me from getting with that little hottie. That's the spirit. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Yes, I love it. My bet is safe. Oh, this means something to you, drama? Oh, yeah. It means you got a furry, bro. What the fuck's a furry? Someone who wants to fuck you like you're a stuffed animal. So, our show's protagonists have a bet to see who can get day sex first. Turtle finds a girl on Craigslist of all places. They meet and she is objectively attractive. They set a time after Turtle picks up her bunny suit from the dry cleaners. Turtle wearing a bunny suit is crazier than a bird wearing a bunny costume. Life hack time. Never put your fursuit into a clothes dryer because the fur will get messed up. And never ever take your fursuit to a dry cleaner because they won't know how to clean it. I know from experience the best way to get stains out of a fursuit is to cleanse it in fire. Good thing that this is not an actual fursuit. Rental animal costumes are the most obvious sign that the show producers or costume department have no idea what they're doing and what you're watching is rough fursploitation. Actually, furrow files refer to it as boinking. <laughs> wow, turtle. I mean, this is freaky, even for me. Don't let them get in your head, turtle. Furries are people, too. Score. Accuracy, zero. The invention of lingo like furrow files refer to sex as boinking. Clearly, they didn't see Culturally F's two episodes on furry lingo. The only definition for furry given is someone who likes to fuck you like you're a stuffed animal. But also that furries are people, too. So Spirit gets one whole point. The single point is for the sentence, furries are people too. I feel like a person now. Maybe I'm biased, but these guys are douches. Do we even get to talk to the woman the guy is getting into suit for? Is she a reasonably healthy person? I'll give the guy some credit for going through with it. I hope that lady had good air conditioning. That brings their score to 0.5% because I say so. And now for my thoughts on this clip. For my own rusty points, these guys are ugly and rude. Toxic, fragile masculinity as exemplified by their sex-having competition. Their fursuits are F- minus as well. Clearly crappy rentals. Zero points. The joke relied a lot on the visual humor of the ridiculous suits. It would probably not have made the same impact if it were any other sexual fetish, which makes this legit fursploitation. Second on our list is Eye Zombie. So a frat boy is dressed as Caesar is stabbed to death in the middle of a party by this mascot, Captain Wazzles. He shouts furry fuck before his death. Later, another suspect admits to flirting with a woman in a sexy unicorn costume. Throughout the episode, they keep saying furry costume and not mascot or animal costume. Wazzles apparently is from a fake European cartoon. They seem pretty convinced that it's the costume that's the perp, on very little evidence. This is the first and only episode of iZombie I've seen, and the takeaway is clear. Drugs and alcohol are lots of fun, and fret parties are dangerous places for women. At least it's a lot more sarcastic look at bro culture than Entourage was. Captain Wazzles is awesome. Um, why do you want to talk about the costume? I swear it wasn't damaged when we returned it. Are they saying that it was damaged? Gross. Who rents suits? Why do people think we rent fursuits? Who would do that? Wazzles is a pretty cute name, though. Can you tell us where you were two nights ago, around 10 p.m.? Uh, I was at home with Becky. We were just hanging out at home. Yeah, he was with me all night, I swear. So you rented the costume and then just stayed home and didn't use it? Well, yeah. Not all fursuiters live in their suits, you know. I'm a furry. A what? I'm into costumes that look like stuffed animals. Like, sexually. It's a fetish, okay? I 
was not expecting that. You could have just said you were practicing for a play or making a YouTube video. She's super excited to admit her furry fetish. I wonder if that's how she acts around everyone she meets. Look at her. She's literally shaking to tell them what they were up to. They ended up having nothing to do with the murder. Uh, here's what I'm going to need. I'm going to need details. Photos. Don't need details or photos. Unless you have them and they're hilarious. You definitely don't need details or photos. Yes, we do. Don't we all? By the time I got the Captain Wazoo's costume from the shop, they had already been laundered. I was hoping forensics could still get something off of it. I'm kind of glad they couldn't after what our furry friends told us. The costume was laundered before forensics, but they could probably still do forensics on it. I could be wrong, but the very last shot of this episode is a guy doing drugs while watching the news, and I think it's those furries on the newscast. Drugs and watching furries on TV is one slippery slope Google search to having your life altered forever. Accuracy, zero. No one rents suits, especially for that reason. Spirit, 50 points. They seem pretty chill about the whole furry thing. While our main character asks for hilarious pics, they're not overall too shamey about it. And for my thoughts, I give it 2 out of 10 rusty points. Good looking young couple, but statistically they should be a gay couple. The suit is a bit cartoony, and yeah, it's a rental. Like used for children's parties, theater productions, parades. Why would anyone think it's a good idea to have sex at, on, or in one? If you're planning on doing that with a fursuit, do what everyone else does and find a used fursuit in the trash and cut some holes in it. Then put it back in the trash, where it belongs! And finally, our third and final video for this week's Furries in the Media is The Drew Carey Show. Yeah, it's 15 years old at this point, but it's the best we got, okay? <laughs> Silly me, I was expecting a negligee. I know that this is a little unusual, but this makes it more exciting for me. Is that a problem? Drew's mother sets him up on a date. On a second date after some couch snuggling, she emerges wearing a squirrel outfit. It looks like the same fursuit maker that did the Purple Panther from CSI Las Vegas. Drew takes the story home to his friends, much to their bemusement. Oswald announces that there are men and women with conventions and websites and everything, but no one mentions anything outside the sexual connotation. Drew is pretty upset by it. To be fair, she did roll it out pretty poorly. You look so hot. Well, I, I know they say a sense of humor is the most important thing to a woman, but I got the biggest tail I could find, just in case. <laughs> It was really sweet of you to give this a try. Drew eventually gives it a shot, which is actually in pretty good spirits. His mother's appalled, though. Accuracy, 50%. Mentioning the conventions and website gave it some effort. Spirit, 75%. Losing the points only for making it about the fetish. Drew handles it in good spirits, and his fuss isn't abusive or overly cartoonish. He's really bummed out about furries, though. And my takeaway, the first it was pretty good, must be the same maker as Pathcon Panther. And also, this episode came out a year after CSI Las Vegas Furry episode, which I feel is taking the same joke and making it a little lighter. Though there's still a long way to go as evidenced by the other two shows we reviewed today. Also, all three fictional furries we looked at today were all women! Drew Carey's show gets 5 out of 10 rusty points, which, spoiler alert, don't count for anything. So these TV shows introduced characters with plushophilic fetishes into their storyline. We tried to find shows that were beyond just one punchline jokes and find examples where furries as people were more engaged in the overall plot. Together they paint a one-note picture of furries that explains a lot of the preconceptions you've likely come across. Unfortunately, these are the ambassadors that the TV studios have decided represent the furry fandom. Are these exploitative? Did the writers use furries as just a quirky thing to make it awkward and funny? Yeah, they kinda did. It's these examples that are often people's first and only exposure to furries and the furry fandom. We could be here all day talking about CSI Las Vegas and ER and a handful of other identical instances, but instead we continue the conversation over on my channel! When is something exploitative? Can furries exploit themselves? Is this channel a exploitation? Is culturally effed? Find out with Abergwine over on Culturally Eft by clicking this link. 
Be sure to subscribe here to Abergwine and click here to see her on Culturally Apt talking about furry exploitation, or as we call it, first exploitation. And subscribe to my channel too while you're over there. Let Abergwine know down in the comments section what you think about the worst examples of furry fiction we could find. I've been your special guest host, Rusty Shackelfer, and thanks for watching.